What's up my beautiful bros, Birdie Maniac here with week 10 NFL Power Rankings like we do every week. Well, we haven't done it, we didn't do it at the beginning, but we are doing it now. And we've been doing it since I believe week 4 or 5, somewhere around there. And we start with number 32, the worst team in the league still for the last couple years. Been the worst team in the league, the Cleveland Browns. Showing no signs of improvement, bad coaching, bad quarterback handling, bad quarterback play. With no Joe Thomas, bad offensive line, okay defense. One thing I do have to note, impressed with how Miles Garrett has been playing. He is so far showed that he's worthy of the number one overall pick. That's something they done right. At number 31, we have the 49ers. They had a very winnable game against the Arizona Cardinals last week. They should have won, but the quarterback play kind of helped them get blown out. I love what they have at running back with Bethard and Rita. I like what they have at wide receiver, but Garcon getting put on IR really, really hurts. Joe Staley's still out with an injury. I don't know how long it's going to be until we see Garoppolo. So, until then, you know, they're at 31. Next, we have a couple of droppers here. At number 30, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I debated on putting them a little higher because their record isn't the worst, but with Jameis Winston shut down for at least two weeks and Mike Evans suspended for a week, it's just, overall, it just seems like a failing franchise kind of thing. It's just signs of doom and gloom here. All the injuries, all the immaturity, all the inconsistencies, just nothing here. That I can support putting them any higher. They drop three spots to number 30. At number 29 we have the Giants who dropped a spot. Granted after a tough loss. But good news for the Giants. They got Sterling Shepard back. And he really showed up in the last game. I'm not saying Sterling Shepard has to be a number one. I believe the number one on that team. For this team to succeed. Or at least bounce back a little bit. is going to have to be Ingram. Ingram is going to have to be that number one player. Sterling Shepard is going to have to be a great complimentary player, which he was last year, and he can do it again. I think the Giants do have some winnable games up ahead, including the next one against San Fran, but their record dictates that they are one of the worst teams in the league, so 29th is as high as I can safely put them. At number 28, we have the first movers of the week coming with the Arizona Cardinals moving up one spot to 28, switching with the Giants. I'm not saying they really did a ton to deserve moving up a lot, but they did get a nice solid win. Granted, it was against San Fran, but Stanton proved that maybe he can do enough to win a few games in an Arizona uniform. I Adrian Peterson kind of showed up a little bit, not too much, but I like what they have at receivers. And their DBs are starting to step up, which is what they're going to need if they're going to need to win a couple more games. At 27, a big shocker of a game last week, in my opinion, for more than one reason. You have the Indianapolis Colts moving up three spots to number 27, their highest ranking for me all year. And that comes off a dramatic win over the Texans. Um, I, I get that Tom Savage, or I get that Tom Savage played terribly just absolutely terribly in that game but Jacoby Brissett threw for over 300 yards T.Y. Hilton had over 150 yards receiving they beat a still solid Texans defense so that does warrant some credit I believe they're now fighting for third place in the division which is nice I kind of thought maybe the Colts would kind of kick it back a little bit and try to fight for one of the top picks and get probably the best offensive lineman in the draft. But it doesn't look to me like they're quite doing that and they want to fight. If they can keep Jacoby Brissett and get Andrew Luck back healthy next year, they have possibly the best quarterback room since Andrew Luck joined them. At number 26, we have the Green Bay Packers dropping three spots. It hurts me to put them down here because if Aaron Rodgers was healthy, they'd probably be easily a top 10 team. But with the injury to Aaron Rodgers and Brett Helney playing kind of bad football, I'm not. he didn't have bad statistics the last game. He had over 200 yards. He had a rushing touchdown. But his plays were just awful. 
There was one play where he got sacked, and there was a wide open receiver with no one within 10 yards of him, and just absolutely didn't see it. He's going to need to improve dramatically if the Packers are going to have playoff aspirations when Rodgers gets back, if he gets back. And at number 25, we have a team coming off a of bye week, the Chicago Bears. Overall, I wouldn't say the Bears are a good team. They have a really good defense with some impressive young rookies. Their offense, to me, really needs to step up. More specifically, their passing game really, really needs to step up soon. It's going to be hard without Zach Miller, the tight end, who got, did get injured. Hopefully he recovers, and hopefully he gets back on track and he plays again because that dramatic of an injury it's scary and if he was on field they might be ranked higher but he's sidelined for at least a little while and Mitch Trubisky has shown really no signs of improvement so until then they're stuck down below next up we have one of the AFC North teams that used to be a powerhouse not even half a decade half a decade ago we have number 24 Baltimore Ravens dropping four spots their offense, just to me, looks so, so bad. Joe Flacco looks awful. But, to me, they lost to a Titans team. And I do like the Titans. But, their defense looked exposed a little bit in this one. And that's what's been keeping the Ravens, so, for me, alive in the power rankings. Was their defense and their solid play. But... To me, it kind of looked like they're starting to bottom out and starting to lose motivation. Because, on all honesty, you look at that division, they stand probably maybe a 5% chance at most of winning it. And it's just kind of sad to see such a historic franchise over the last decade come to this over the last few years. <laughs> Speaking of franchises that used to be good and now kind of suck, we have the number 23 Cincinnati Bengals. No offense to Bengals fans, move, dropping six spots. Major reason for this huge of a drop here is the terrible, terrible offensive line play. It's just awful. AJ Green, that fight he got into. Granted, what was said, I understand the heat of the moment thing, but it's just the atmosphere that I feel like the losing has created in that locker room is almost feels like at a toxic level I Joe Mixon is getting kinda selfish and he's not really producing as much I don't think Ross has really gotten onto the field at all this year it just looks like a complete mess Andy Dalton is playing decent he is but with that offensive line this is probably their ceiling from now on probably number 23 is Definitely probably where they will stay. At number 22, we have the New York Jets coming off an impressive Thursday night football victory over the Buffalo Bills. Not really taking control of the division, but really staying alive in the division and staying alive in that wild card race in the AFC because that wild card race is going to be intense this year. I feel it's so palpable already and it's not even close to the playoffs yet. They move up four spots. Like I said, good win. They had a ton of sacks in that game, which is great for that team. Adams and May are showing some great improvement on the defense. The only thing that concerns me, though, is the penalties that they do get on offense and the turnovers. If they can limit those, then the Jets could be a wildcard team, even though they still are technically a long shot. At number 21, we have the Raiders, Las, soon to be Las Vegas Raiders, Oakland Raiders. They are plus 3 up to 21 this week. They're coming off a decently good victory against the Miami Dolphins. But so far, there's still some holes that I want filled before I move them up too much. Now, if you see the team ahead of them, you'll, you'll question it probably, but... I have some concerns. Amari Cooper is in and out. Derek Carr is wildly inconsistent this year. Marshawn Lynch shows up one week and then he disappears the next. And the defense seems to have trouble stopping almost anybody. I think Khalil Mack needs to do a better job of wrangling in his teammates and smacking some sense into them. 
They do have a chance at the AFC West crown, but they're going to need to step up big time if they want to win it. And at number 20, the first team to crack the top 20, the, the slightly above mediocre Miami Dolphins. I do like what they have done as a team, considering what they have. Jay Cutler is performing better recently than I thought he was capable of. The major concern for me now is after that Jay Ajayi trade, their backfield kind of disappeared in that last game, so that does cause some, some concern. I do like the receiving core of Jarvis Landry and Devontae Parker, though. They are a solid 1-2 combo, and Julius Thomas is a nice addition at tight end. There's also some holes on defense, but if they can play well enough together and they can gel, they definitely stand a, stand a chance at that wild card spot. I just think they need a little bit more time together and maybe things on defense can click enough to have to keep the offense in the games at least. And at number 17, we have possibly the most overrated team in the league, in my opinion. Probably I overrate them. I do not know. They're at number 17, the Los Angeles Chargers, moving up two spots. They're coming off a bye week, so it's weird moving them. I guess it's more to move them because of other teams doing so bad, but I digress. Coming off a bye week, they get a chance to be healthy. I love what their offense can do with Antonio Gates, Hunter Henry, Tyrell Williams... Philip Rivers, obviously. Melvin Gordon, really, really solid running back. They are coming off a bye week, and then before that, they came off a loss to the Patriots. But they played well. Joey Bosa and Ingram are playing well. I think the secondary needs to step up. And with the recent losses by the Chiefs, the Chargers are still in the hunt for the division. Granted, the chances are probably less than 10%, but all they need to do is keep on winning. And... They do have the talent to do it. The Titans move up four spots this week to number 18. I like what their offense is doing. Marcus Mariota is really starting to show that he's bouncing back from his injury. The one major, major concern was Derek, or Derek Henry and DeMarco Murray did get stifled a little bit. Other than that, I do love the combo of Delaney Walker and Rashard Matthews at tight end and receiver. It's a solid team. The defense is really solid. I like what Logan Ryan brings as a leader. Their rookies are really impressive. I can't remember the specific name of the DB, but he had two games in a row where he had three interceptions and two interceptions. If you know the Titans, then you know who I'm talking about. Biard. I, it's not that I don't know his name. It's like Biard. I just really don't know how to pronounce it, and I don't want to butcher it, so I apologize if I just did. Amazing talent, playing at an all-pro level this year. They're starting to improve. I believe they're tied for first place in the division right now. And if they didn't win the division, I believe they're in like first place contention for wild card or second place or something like that. So it looks to me like they're playoff bound. So having them at 18 does seem a little crazy considering only 12 teams make the playoffs. But there's other teams ahead that I feel like might sneak in. And it will be a, it'll definitely be a fun race this year. At number 17, we have the Broncos dropping one spot. I struggled putting them this high because of their very, very anemic offense. Their offensive line is struggling incredibly. C.J. Anderson hasn't been able to get anything going, mainly due to the offensive line worries. Trevor Simeon has played so terribly. That they're now starting Brock Osweiler, who's being paid by the Cleveland Browns, because he wasn't good enough to have a job in Cleveland. So, it is a huge concern, but I didn't want to drop them too much lower, because their defense is still extremely solid, even if they allowed 50-something points to the Philadelphia Eagles. They face a task in the New England Patriots team, but the no-fly zone might be able to get back on track. Considering there's not too many weapons you have to cover in New England that pose a serious, serious threat. There's Brandon Cooks and Gronkowski. I don't think I don't know if Hogan will be playing. It's a tough week for them. So they do have a prime chance to bounce back. And their defense is still solid. So with a defense that good, they're still probably one of the top teams in the league. But they enter the bottom half this week. 
At number 16, a team just like the Denver Broncos in the sense that their quarterback play causes huge concerns. We have the Houston Texans who lost to the Indianapolis Colts. They are on a slide and they are probably going to drop lower and lower. Just like the other two teams that lost their starting quarterbacks in the Arizona Cardinals and Green Bay Packers and the Indianapolis Colts. Their defense is still suffering from the losses of Whitney Merciless and J.J. Watt. So, I just feel like it's a downward slope. The Texans are not going to recover anytime soon. Then at number 15, we have the Atlanta Falcons dropping five spot. They had a... It was more of a case of they had another lead, and they failed to hold it again. This has been a pattern with them since the Super Bowl. I think there's some hesitation in the play callings. I also think Steve Sarkeesian was a complete mishire for the Atlanta Falcons franchise. They should have hired some. I granted, if they wanted to move away from the Shanahan playbook, I understand, but they should have hired someone who was more similar to their that system, because it's starting to cause Matt Ryan to be inconsistent. The running game can't really get going, and the young defenders are just all over the place. It's kind of disappointing for such a once great team last year to be doing so bad this year. Up next, we have number 14, Washington Redskins, moving up five spots, one of the biggest movers of the week. They had a great game against the Seattle Seahawks with a lot of injuries on board to their offensive line and everything. That made that win much, much more impressive. After a few weeks of being stagnant at number 19, they finally earned a jump, but they do go into a tough game against the Minnesota Vikings, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle two of the top leagues, two of the league's top defenses in back-to-back -back weeks. If they win this one, who knows what the Redskins can do. And after them are the Buffalo Bills moving down five spots, number 13. If it was, if I was okay with them losing on a short week to the New York Jets, but that probably would have dropped them maybe four spots. But the post-game interview that Richie Incognito had showed me something's going on in that locker room. Because if he's going to come out and complain about it not being fair that they played Thursday, oh my god, it's so unfair, yet knowing that both teams face the same conditions, almost every team in the league plays on a Thursday night game at least once in a year. And then just absolutely, but they just disappeared Thursday, and he's blaming it just on the fact that they played Thursday, and if they played Sunday, oh, they would have won that game easily. To me... It's that mental attitude that's just seems like they're going to crumble. And there's that feeling in my head like they're going to crumble. And I just, I want to keep them up here, but it's just, I, I, I got to see a little bit more from them. Up next is the Detroit Lions moving up two spots to number 12. They had a really solid game against the Packers. Granted, they were facing Brett Hundley. And they go into another week where they face Detroit. Now, if they want to have a shot at that division in the Minnesota Vikings, or at least a wild card spot where they're going to have to be fighting right now the Seattle Seahawks and the Dallas Cowboys, they're going to need to win some games coming up. And this is one of them. They've played well. Marvin Jones and Amir Abdullah have been stepping up, which is nice. Eric Ebron still has the hands of a butter, butter stick. I think the most underrated thing about the Lions right now and the most impressive thing, their secondary is playing quite well lately. And I'm in, quite impressed. I, but number 12, I think, is as high as they, they are. They deserve to be right now. They do have some bad losses that do kind of outweigh their good victories. But they're trending definitely in the right direction. At number 11, we have the Carolina Panthers coming off, a, honestly, a great victory for the team. I'm impressed. They're number 11 now. I was kind of surprised honestly I know I'm kind of like stuttering a little bit but without Calvin Benjamin I thought they would struggle at least a little bit but they played well their defense stepped up Cam Newton played well granted it was more of Cam Newton running the football again Cam Newton running the football again the running backs can't run the football and that's the trend to me that kind of holds them back in my rankings are they going to get the running backs more involved or is it just going to be Cam Newton running the football every time they run and their def their secondary does still have some holes, but I do like what their front seven brings. It's one of the better front sevens in the league. But number 11, to me right now, would 
have them ranked as a possible playoff team, which they definitely could be. They, but they need to win their upcoming games against the Saints, and they definitely need to win this next game against Miami. Coming at next, starting off the top 10, we have the Kansas City Chiefs dropping four spots. They, th their play against the Dallas Cowboys concerns me. Granted, the Dallas Cowboys do have a group really good offense with Dak, Dez, Witten, Zeke, obviously. Beasley's really underrated. And um, Williams is also playing decent. But they're, the Chiefs offense against the Cowboys defense. I'm not saying the Cowboys defense is bad whatsoever. I'm just saying the Chiefs offense should have been able to exploit. Ty Tyreek Hill did okay. Travis Kelsey did eh. But Kareem Hunt, another straight game without 100 yards from scrimmage. He should have had a great matchup against the Cowboys, but he just kind of didn't show up. And if they can't get more balance out of their offense, they're going to keep sliding and keep losing like they did. Um, I think it was Tom Pahali. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But they came out and said the Cowboys are the best team in the league because they just got molly whopped by them. And that kind of concerns me because do you believe that you're a really good team and that you only lost because they're the best team in the league? Or should you believe that you're the best team in the league and that you just lost a close or that you just had a tough game? One of those down days, you know what I mean? It's that self like awareness kind of thing that concerns me. I don't think any player in the league should be like, oh no, they're the best team. I think every team player should have that confidence. We're the best team. We got this. Because the Chiefs at one point were number one. But lately they've just been dropping. And rightfully so, cracking the top ten at number nine, moving up four spots, we have the Dallas Cowboys. As I just mentioned, their defense is playing well. Although, with the talent around it, you would assume it'd be a front seven dominant defense. But their secondary has been stepping up lately, which is nice. Their offense is playing extremely well. Their offensive line is starting to gel a little bit better. Ezekiel Elliott's getting going. Desk, Dak Prescott's making all the smart throws, which is sometimes more important than just bombing it downfield is making the smart throws. And Dak Prescott, in his second year, knows exactly what smart throws to make and almost knows exactly what receiver to hit at most of the time. And Jason Witten has been a true leader of the offense. I think his leadership is one of the most underrated factors of why the Dallas Cowboys have bounced back. He's been there before, and he's definitely, definitely going to help them get back up there. We have another couple movers. At number 8, we have the Seattle Seahawks dropping four spots. More so the fact they lost to the injury-riddled Rams. I don't quite know what's wrong with the Seahawks. I didn't get to watch this game in person, but their running game is... They don't have that featured back. At first, it was Rawls. At, then it was someone else. And now it's Collins. And then it's someone else. It's just... I don't know. It's their, their offensive line and running game is just so confusing to me. The addition of Dwayne Brown is quite nice. That's one reason why they're still in the top 10. But the running game, I think they need a clear feature back to get going to help Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is playing amazing football right now. Jimmy Graham is really stepping up for him. So is Paul Richardson. Paul Richardson at the beginning of the year, I don't think many people knew who he was besides the playoffs last year. But he's really stepping up into the role and he's really accepting it. And Doug Baldwin is showing to be a true leader. Congrats to him on helping to guide the young receivers in that team. Unfortunately, the last couple of weeks, the Legion of Boom haven't looked like the Legion of Boom. They look like the Legion of... I don't know. I can't think of a clever rhyme for that. Legion of Doom. Like, they look doomful. They l allowed so many points to the Texans in a close game where they barely won. But then they lost to the Redskins, whose offensive line is absolutely terrible and riddled with injuries. So I don't know if that says more about their front seven or if it was just a bad game for them. I'm hoping it was just a bad game because I don't want to drop them too low because they are one of the best teams in the league and have historically been for the last four or five years. At number seven, a team that helped knock down the Seahawks a peg, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars moving up three spots or moving up four spots to number seven. 
Blake Bortles is showing some consistency over the last few weeks, which I do like. Leonard Fournette has either been injured on bye or benched, like it's suspended the last few weeks, so it's going to be interesting to see how they play with him back. Hearns and Marquise Lee have stepped up quite a bit for the Jacksonville receiving core. Mercedes Lewis is playing really solid blocking and receiving football at tight end. Their defense is crazy with Ramsey and Bowie. And then you have the Clyde Campbell, Marce- Marcel Darius front on defense. It's just insane. If a team's going to beat the Jaguars, they're going to have to egg Blake Bortles into a mistake. Or they're going to have to expose the linebacking core and coverage, I think, is the, probably their weak point on defense. Not much I can say about this team right here that hasn't been said before. The Vikings move up three spots to number six. Their defense is playing astounding football. Case Keenum has provided a solid option at quarterback. They just put Sam Bradford on IR today and activated Teddy Bridgewater, so I'm not quite sure what that means for the quarterback room and who's going to be starting in the ne- in the next few weeks. But Lartavius Murray and Jarek McKinnon have provided a solid backfield. Stefan Diggs, Adam Thielen have proven to be one of the best one-two punches at wide receiver in the league. And I just, I, I overall, I like where this team is going to win. At number five, we have the New Orleans Saints moving up two spots, mainly due to the losses by the Chiefs and the Seahawks. But I do like what their team's doing on offense. They're scoring like they always have over the past eight, nine years. But their defense is really stepping up. Impressive rookies all over the board. Anzalone, an underrated linebacker. Lattimore, probably a head candidate for Defensive Rookie of the Year, right next to like Eddie Jackson from the Chicago Bears. Overall, I did not expect this turnaround. I don't know if anybody expected this turnaround in, on their defense. They remind me of the Boston Celtics starting 0-2 and then rattling off a win streak because they have not lost since they lost to the Patriots. And to me, to me that alone is just shows their guts and metal. They have a tough game against Buffalo this week, so it'll be interesting to see how they do. At number four, we have the Los Angeles Rams, who laid a 50-burger this week and have been playing insane football. Their defense has shown some holes, but not too many. Their secondary is playing well, and their defensive line is, or their front seven, has been playing decent run defense. Todd Gurley, Sammy Watkins, and Jared Goff are a deadly combo when you throw in some Higby. Higby is a tight end I did not think I'd be hearing from a lot this year, but he's been showing up more and more every week, and I kind of like that. Originally, when I did the trade video, I said they need they needed Eric Eric Ebron, but if Higby can keep stepping up, I don't think the Rams need a tight end because they might have a really solid tight end of the future, and I like where they're going. At number twenty, at number three, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers still at number three. They are a really good team. I like what their defense and offense are doing. What concerns me the most is their inconsistent play. Is there still that? That thought of Big Ben on the road is Big Ben on the road, and Big Ben at home is Big Ben at home. There are two different quarterbacks, and it's kind of scary thinking about that, especially when you get into the playoffs if they don't have home field advantage. I do love, I love, 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 love the four-player combo of Schuster, Brown, Bell, and Ben. I think it was a mistake not trading Martavius Bryant. I believe that locker room is one tick away from becoming toxic, and we saw what happened in the playoffs last year after the Facebook post. This is a team that cannot have distractions because they do not do well with distractions. At number two, we still have the New England Patriots coming off a bye week, so it should be interesting to see how they do this week against the Denver Broncos. Will Chris Hogan be healthy? It's currently looking like Shea McClellan is going to stay on IR, which sucks because they used one of his de- one of the teams designated to return tags on him, so they can still only bring back one player. They did sign free agent defensive lineman Ricky Jean Francois, I believe is his name. They they should be able to get a little bit healthier. It looks like Eric Rowe and Stefan Gilmore are going to be back against the Broncos, and they've been without two of their top three corners over the last few weeks. So that should help the defense a little bit. Their offensive line is starting to play more consistent. Granted, Nate Solder has been getting penalized a little bit more lately. 
I do like what their defensive line has been doing in their linebacker core. It's still going to be strange without Dante Hightower, but as long as you've got Brady and Gronk on the offensive side of the football, you always have a chance. And I do love how Cooks has been adapting to the system. He's adapted a lot quicker than I thought he would. It's been a good week. They're 6-2, and two, and um, not much more to say about that. At number one, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, there's not much I can say about the Eagles that hasn't been said before. 8-1, and one, Carson Wentz, 23 touchdown passes, the great running core of Blunt, Ajayi, and Wendell Smallwood. Their offensive line is playing well, even without their Jason Peters. Their defense, defense is playing great. Chris Long is providing some solid leadership. Their secondary is really stepping up. I think it's a team that might have a couple holes, but their holes haven't been exposed lately. And they laid up a 50-burger against the Broncos' defense. So this team is a legitimate Super Bowl threat. And I think probably the biggest threat to take home the Super Bowl at this point in the season so far this year. Now let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Let me know if there's anybody you would rank differently. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new. I do these power rankings every week, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.